I've had the 2023 XR150L for over 2100 miles now, so here's a little update on the things that really exceeded my expectations and the things that I straight up am not happy with on the bike. First off, I was seriously caught off guard by the oil consumption on this brand new bike. At first I thought I must have received a faulty unit, but I started looking for other reviews of the bike and found that many people are experiencing high rates of oil consumption on the 2023 North American XR150L. I've kept track of the top up oil I've been adding since I received the bike with 0.2 miles on the odometer and now I have 2,170 miles on the odometer. Over that time I've had to add 825 milliliters of oil nearly an entire liter. That means the rate of oil consumption is about 400 milliliters over 1,000 miles, which is very high. At such a high rate of oil consumption, I would expect to see some light smoking, but the exhaust on this thing is beautifully clean, even on the morning startup, and there's hardly even a trace of soot in the exhaust. This leads me to believe the oil must be getting blown out of one of the breathers and is likely ending up somewhere other than back in the intake tract. Now, for a pleasant surprise, the freeway performance of this little 150 is way better than I would have expected. My first time commuting on the freeway, I was surprised to find that the bike has very reasonable top speed. Just cruising along with traffic, it'll maintain 65 miles per hour. With a tight tuck and strategic positioning behind a fast moving truck, it'll actually hit the RPM limit in fifth gear, which is right at 73 miles per hour. Of course, when you're out on rural roads cutting your own wind, the top speed is much less at about 60 miles per hour on flat ground. But still, I am happy to report that I've consistently had good experiences riding this little thing on the freeway, and it's very convenient to not have to shy away from freeways. And now for another disappointment. On the rear suspension of this bike, there is no way to increase or decrease the spring preload. In my experience, this is the single most important suspension setting, the one thing that even the most basic bikes let you adjust because of how detrimental it is to the handling of the bike. And on this bike, there's no way to adjust it short of disassembling the rear shock and adding spacers or changing out the spring collars. Honda even has it listed as adjustable in their official specifications. And sure, you could go out of your way and mess with the collars and spacers, so I guess technically it is, but if you ask me, calling it adjustable on your specs page is not right. But hey, maybe they'll just go back and change the specs page like they did after I posted my last video on this bike. And I also hope that when they do, they offer everyone that bought the bike some money to go purchase a shock that actually has an adjustable preload collar. All right, now to cool off a bit with another pleasant surprise where the bike exceeded my expectations. The carburetor tune from the factory is impressively close to spot on. I've ridden more than my fair share of bone stock factory carbureted bikes, and usually they need major adjustment before they work in a manner that I would consider decently, and admittedly I am super picky when it comes to throttle response, but on this one they nearly nailed it. I was expecting the same ultra lazy stock tune as what came with the CRF150F, since this bike shares an engine with the 2006 Plus CRF150F, but they actually used an updated carburetor on the XR150L and made it significantly richer on the main, and it works very well in brand new condition. Thank goodness we don't have to immediately modify the bike just to be able to ride it safely. And for my final gripe, I promise this one's actually a minor issue, I wish it had snail adjusters on the rear axle instead of adjuster bolts. This thing runs a 428 chain, which means there's a boatload of extra wear points compared to a standard 520 chain, and the chain needs to be adjusted fairly often. This is not a problem, it's just a matter of convenience. Snail adjusters are quick, painless, and extremely durable, while adjuster bolts are mildly frustrating. Lastly, I'll finish off with two more pleasant surprises. Despite not having a rising rate linkage, the rear end is not crazy harsh in the initial stroke. The rear spring is a dual rate spring with the soft section being nice and cushy, so an attempt at ride comfort was made on this bike. And the other pleasant surprise is that even though this is some of the worst suspension ever equipped on a motorcycle marketed as being off-road capable, the good news is the bike is simply not fast enough to get into serious trouble off-road. I mean, I'll be out there just squeezing every ounce of juice out of this thing, and I'm still just going pretty slow and not worrying about the handling at all. And it is very fun to be out there letting this bike sing at the top of its lungs, rowing gears, working the clutch, just doing everything to get the most out of it, 
and it's still just not getting sketchy. 